Hello and welcome to another episode of Melbourne 22. I'm Aaron McCarthy. And I'm Anna Burgess. Now tonight we're going to take a look at a charity that helps children. We'll also be wowed by some of Melbourne's most talented magicians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> we're going to hop aboard Puffing Billy. And much, much more. All that coming right up. That was amazing dancing, by the way, I know. in the That's, title credits. We then. did, we did. And I have to breathe now because it's another episode of Melville 22. Yes, it is. Is and it? it? No, it is. It is. Oh, right. It's, it's not just a dream. I dream about this place all the time. Um, but it's going to be an amazing show. Apparently so. Mm -hmm. hmm. But uh, before we get to that, remember you can also keep up to date with all things Melbourne 22 by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, taking a photo, uploading it to Instagram. Do you see where, you feel me? You mm -hmm. see where I'm coming from here, mm -hmm. Anna? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Aaron. Yes, Anna. Aaron. Mm. Yes. Look at, you're looking at me. Okay, good. Now look at the camera. Now look at me. Do you remember I'm last week? Do you remember? I'm on a horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, do you remember last week yes. when we had a look Vividly. at the community soup kitchen? Yes, and I told you stop eating that. That's for the other people. For the people who need it. That's right. Yes. Most. Well, this week we're having a look at another charity that provides a great service. We are. TLC for Kids is a nationally renowned charity that provides special and unique care to children all across the country. They often organise fundraisers to help them provide this care, such as Tracky Dack Day back in May, where they covered the Melbourne Town Hall with tracksuit pants and sent their mascots Splidge and Splodge out to daycare centres. We hope that you know, one day by supporting TLC for Kids, the children that are unwell um, and are sick are obviously able to experience um, the fun that we have each day. TLC for Kids specialises in providing children with distractions against the hospital routine. If a nurse or healthcare professional believes a child could do with something to bring back some fun and normality to their life, they will notify TLC for Kids, who will meet the request within 48 hours. Their rapid TLC service is the fastest referral system of its kind in Australia. In essence what it is, it's a national organisation and we try and raise money for families and kids who are in serious need of our support. The work here is incredibly rewarding. That sense of um, just that we've made a difference to somebody's life, you know, you feel so good being part of that whole process. TLC for Kids is perhaps most well known for its distraction box service. These distraction boxes are filled with objects or activities that are designed to divert children's attention away from their procedure, which makes them more relaxed and cooperative and reduces their anxiety. There are currently more than a thousand distraction boxes in use across Australia, with over 600,000 children benefiting from them every year. There's a lot of feel-good moments, a lot of heart that goes into this role, so I'm lucky. The look on their face when you arrive and they, you know, they're and opening up the bags and just seeing the, all the different items that they're going to have a lot of fun with, it just make a difference. And we can, I can arrive or um, when the children's really, the child is quite down and you, it's amazing, the staff will turn and say, uh, you've just come just at the right time, you know, he's so down or she's really flat, and wow. TLC for Kids is one of those charities that helps the most vulnerable, and that's kids in hospital. And what I love about TLC is they provide that emotional support for kids when really they're most worried, most anxious. So whether it's the distraction boxes or the emotional support, this is a wonderful charity. There are no waiting lists for TLC services. They've never turned away a single request for support, there is no pre-required level of illness for children to qualify for help. 
and they don't discriminate about which children receive support. They simply live by the philosophy, if there is need, we will address it in the shortest time possible. We can't um, change their condition and what they're facing, but what we could do is try and give them a bit of a lift and put a smile on their dial, as we call it, and, and then going home with all these items too means that they've just got that memory of um, some fun while they've been in hospital. In essence, that's what it is, and that, that can't be all bad, uh, providing tender loving care for children. Thank you for TMCD Tips. Wow, that is absolutely incredible, an incredible work done by all of those people there. We're now joined in the studio by a member of the Board of Directors for TLC for Kids, Ralph Alfonso. How are you doing today, Ralph? Good, thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Now, what we just saw then was just so heartwarming and inspiring. And so just tell us, obviously, um, you've been on the board now for five years, I think you were talking yep. about before. What's your role on the board? OK, as being a member of the board where they're uh, for the business side of things, but also there to support the CEO and the staff of the charity to really um, help them implement all the services that, that they're known for mm -hmm. and what, what they want to uh, get out to the community. All right, so as a smaller charity, what does TLC for Kids, what sort of challenges do they face along the way? Like most charities, I think it's the fundraising side of things. And then being a small charity, it's it's very hard to compete with the larger charities mm. for, uh, I guess, the, the brand exposure that, that they have mm. um, and getting themselves known out there. So how does it feel sitting on the board of uh, directors for an organisation that's helping so many sick children? Uh, personally, it's, it's fantastic. I'm doing a little bit. Um, you know, the, the, the staff are out there um, on the front and I'm really there to support. So it, if everyone does a little bit, it adds up to a lot, so I'm doing my little bit. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. If you want to help or find out a little bit more about TLC for Kids, you can head to their website, tlcforkids.org.au. But now it's time for another history lesson. Oh, mm. Really? Let me get my intelligent face on. Oh, I really good at history. <laughs> Federation Square is a public space located in the heart of Melbourne, on the corner of Swanson and Flinders Streets, and is the home of restaurants, galleries, entertainment centres and more. It was designed in the lead up to the centenary of Federation in 2001. In 1996, a competition was held asking entrants to design the city's new civic square. This was won by the combined efforts of Lab Architecture Studio and Bait Smart Architecture. Before construction on Federation Square could start, a deck had to be built over the Jollymont Railway Yards. The deck is supported by over 3,000 tonnes of steel beams, 1.4 kilometres of concrete walls and over 4,000 vibration absorbing spring coils. Construction began in 1998, costing a whopping $450 million with the square opening on October 26, 2002. Since then, Federation Square has received countless accolades, including being voted the 8th ugliest building in the world by UK media group The Telegraph. We're sure they meant the 8th wonder of the world. <laughs> Today, Federation Square continues to thrive, with over 9 million people visiting the site every year. It is still an integral part of Melbourne's culture and history. That's all folks, stay tuned for some more History of Melbourne. After the break, we look at the wonderful world of magic. Stay tuned.